Hi, William here again. Thank you for joining me on this fifth uh, video concerning uh, my learning curve with uh, Paul Howard's fluting jig. Now, this next uh, project is in fact going to be split into two parts. Uh, part A will be the planning of the task and part B will be the execution. Uh, and I'm doing that for two reasons. Um, Firstly, I'm uh, extremely busy this week doing some other projects, so I need uh, a bit of extra time to do that. Uh, and secondly, um, having done four tasks now with, the, with this uh, fluting jig, it's become quite apparent to me that planning is extremely important. It's extremely important to avoid frustration um, and, of course, wasting time and wood. Okay, in planning this task then, I've come up with a couple of ways of um, reducing the guesswork or taking the guesswork out of the planning process in visualising the outcome of your work and also to assist you in making uh, decisions about the router size and the number of iterations involved in your project. Okay, so the first of these methods uh, simply involves the replacement of your uh, router cutter with a pencil in the fluting jig which uh, allows you to quite simply uh, draw on your piece the lines uh, along the router routes um, which means you can very easily see what the outcome of the project is going to look like before you even switch on the router. Now the second um, tool that I've uh, come up with in the past week uh, is in fact a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet which um, takes uh, some information from your project which you plug into the spreadsheet and it then um, from the formulas that I've developed uh, in the spreadsheet will give you uh, a wide range of options and allow you to make an informed decision uh, of what the outcome of your project is going to look like again before even switching on the router. Okay, um, first of all then, let's go and take a look at the spreadsheet, um, what it actually does and how it's going to help us uh, make a decision about uh, the router bit and the number of iterations. Okay, so this spreadsheet then is designed to help us accurately plan our work with the fluting jig, thus avoiding costly mistakes in terms of time and wood. And it achieves this by taking the guesswork uh, out of the mathematics uh, involved in working out uh, router iterations and positions. Let's just uh, spend a minute talking about the terminology that's used here. You'll see these um, phrases, the cutter space, the gap space and the gap size used throughout this spreadsheet. The cutter space is the cutter diameter multiplied by the number of cuts. Um, as an example here, the cutter diameter is 6.3 millimetres multiplied by 10 giving cutter space of 63 millimeters. Uh, the next term you'll see is uh, the gap space. This is the working circumference minus the cutter space. So this is the amount of uh, uncut space you have uh, left on your piece. In this case it's um, 188.33 millimeters. And lastly, the gap size is, in fact, the gap space divided by the number of iterations. So you've got 188 millimetres divided by 10, giving you 18 millimetres gap space. This is the gap between each of the cuts. So basically, there are four sections to the spreadsheet. In the first section here, we enter uh, some basic data regarding our project. Um, uh, the router cutter diameter that we want to use and the smallest radius of the piece. Now typically the smallest radius will be the limit of the inner circle for faceplate work or the radius of the spindle uh, 
for spindle fluting. Um, from this initial data, um, the spreadsheet will auto automatically work out what the circumference of your piece is uh, using simple mathematics, of course. Uh, and this gives us a working circumference for the project. Uh, in section two here, this is what I call a quick uh, iteration guide. It gives you a rough idea of the options that are going to be available to you um, based on the data you've entered here. And I've simply put uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 down here and the uh, expected outcome. Now where you get uh, red numbers, this indicates that the cuts will merge, um, which is probably not what you're looking for. Um, so this is outside of the parameters for the, the priest that you're working on. So then in section three, we have uh, a box here called custom iterations. In this box, you can um, uh, play around with the uh, number of iterations and watching the gap size until you find something that you think is going to be suitable for your piece. In this example here, we have 24 iterations, giving a gap size of about um, 4.17 millimeters, which is uh, okay. So you can use your custom iteration box here to find uh, your ideal solution um, to your project. And then look across at section four to see if you can find a match or a close match uh, with the index plate. Section four here, uh, I've got the uh, four rings that appear on um, Paul's index plate, which is the outer one, which the 60 position holes. Then the next one in is 48 position holes. Uh, the third one in is 36 position holes and the uh, one towards the centre is 14 position holes. Um, from the data we've entered here, the um, cutter space, the gap space and the gap size for the common and obvious um, permutations of the um, positions that you can use in the rings have been automatically calculated. So in this example on the screen we have here, um, we uh, have worked out that we want 24 iterations. So we have to now look on uh, or look in section four. And in fact, we have an exact match um, of 24 iterations, which is obviously every other hole on the 48 position rings. Um, and this gives us uh, a space between um, each of the cuts of 4.17 millimeters, which uh, which is what we wanted. Okay, then if we pull this all together to do a worked example, let's say we are going to use a, a cutter of eight millimeters, and the uh, smallest radius of our piece is 55 millimeters. Um, that's worked out that we've got a working circumference of 345. Um, we're looking for a gap of around about three millimeters um, to make it look busy. So if we try 30 iterations, 3.52, um, which seems to be okay. So we can then look across here and um, see that there's an option here to use the 60 position holes or every other slot on the 60 position holes which gives us what we want. Okay then, I have now got the um, fluting jig mounted on its hinged base uh, and I've got the pencil mounted in the guide bush of the router. This very simple uh, tip here gives us a non-destructive uh, way of uh, testing out many different designs with the jig at different heights and different distances on the lateral from the center. And it's non-destructive of course because when uh, you've filled up the piece uh, 
with designs and it's become confusing, you can simply sand it off and start again. You can, of course, uh, get straight in and use the output from your spreadsheet, uh, since you know that the data is accurate. Uh, but it's always worth checking with this uh, pencil technique first to make sure the effect is what you're looking for. Putting a pencil uh, in place of the router cutter in your router, of course, is not the only way of doing this. You can, of course, get out your protractor and your compass and actually draw what you want on a sheet of paper. Okay, then we have uh, um, a basic design. Um, what I'm going to try and achieve is some art fluting on uh, both sides of the platter um, and if I keep it in the same orientation then uh, the fluting should go this way on the front and the opposite way on the rear and hopefully we'll get some intersection and breakthrough. So what I need to do now is hop across to the laptop, um, load up the spreadsheet and just work out um, uh, the cutter size and the number of iterations I need for this project. Okay then, to apply um, the spreadsheet to my uh, new project, um, I want to use a 6.4 millimeter core box cutter this time. Uh, it's got a round end um, and I think it may make some difference. Uh, 6.4 millimeters of course being uh, as near as damn it a quarter of an inch. Um, the smallest radius of my um, platter which is going to be 10 inches or 255 millimeters 30% um, of that gives us 85 millimeters divided by 2 which is 43 say 43 millimeters or three and a quarter inches um, giving us a working circumference of 270 millimeters, uh, about 10 and a half inches. Now, I want the fluting to be quite intense on this, so looking at the option to have 30 gives us a gap size of 2.61 millimeters, which to me seems perilously thin and easy, uh, prone to damage or breakthrough. Now, there's nothing obvious between um, 24 and 30 that's going to give us a, um, a workable gap size um, while maintaining a large number of the uh, flutes. So another way to actually increase the gap size is to alter the smallest uh, radius which is normally the radius nearest the center of your work um, for instance if we take this up to 47 millimeters it increases the gap size by almost a millimeter up to three and a half mil which to my mind seems a lot safer than two and a half mil okay so there we have the basic uh, planning for this uh, next project will be the subject of a, a different video. Um, I'll also be uh, trying out some new uh, sanding techniques I've been researching on the internet, uh, including a couple of um, sanding tools that I've never come across before. I just need to find a way uh, to avoid this uh, very protracted uh, process with abrasives to get into the fluting to clean it up. Um, piece of sycamore that I'm going to use for this project is quite bland and it's going to need to be blinged up like the last project I did so I'm going to 
hop across to Stuart Farini's channel and see what he's been up to and look for some inspiration. Lastly, just to mention that the spreadsheet I've developed for this, or I've started to develop for this, is uh, available to anybody that wants it. Um, please contact me on my email address that's in the text that uh, goes with this video and I'll happily send you a copy. Uh, and if you're able to make uh, any changes or improvements to it for the benefit of the wood turning community, I'll be happy to receive a copy back. In a week or so's time I hope to have completed this uh, project, uh, so please feel free to come and join me again around this time next week to see how I got on, success or otherwise.